25 adventurers taking the Tulima Donzela Women's Day Executive Climb for Dignity and Social Justice up Mount Kilimanjaro as part of Caring for Girls and the Trek for Mandela will depart from the OR Tambo International Airport uh, tomorrow. The main objective for this group is to get uh, to the sanitary, to get sanitary support to one million girls. It's reported that girls in rural and underprivileged communities miss up to 50 days of school per year due to lack of access to adequate feminine hygiene products. I sat down with Professor Tulima Donzela from the University of Stellenbosch, Richard Mabaso, the founder of the Imbomba Foundation, and Marie van Veik from Alexis Nexus, who are the headline sponsors of this particular leg of the expedition. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. Welcome to all of you. Perhaps let's start with you, Richard. Sunday's just around the corner. Is, is it all systems go? It is all systems go. And uh, we are both excited and anxious because I think there's always anxiety, but we are very excited. I think for me, the biggest thing is just seeing more and more people coming through, not only to climb the mountain, but to support the course. So it is all system go, and we are very excited. We look forward to Sunday. Just clarify the bit about having two tranches in a year, because people always associate it with the July month of Mandela month. How does that work? So last year, an idea came to us as Imbumba Foundation and the Nelson Mandela Foundation that... Uh, because we keep getting people with different interests, yes, we know that their primary objective is to summit Kilimanjaro, some to just tick the bucket list, but beyond that, it's people who want to climb with certain associates or certain age groups. So we decided to, to keep the July still open to everyone. And then we started introducing the August group, which last year had nine people and this year has got 27 people. So when we introduced it, we introduced it as a by invitation only. So we can always be able to get the most out of every participant because you've been able to group them with their age group and they will be able to, to do the climb with the people that they would like to do it. Awesome. Professor yeah. Matonsela, welcome once again. Uh, happy Women's Month. <laughs> happy Women's Month. Thanks, um, Ray. Have, thank you for the privilege. The theme this year is celebrating 25 years of democracy. And uh, it really uh, slants to uh, the uh, prevalence of gender-based violence. You could have choos chosen... Uh, a myriad of uh, 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 activities to get involved in, but you chose this one where you're looking at access of sanitaries to girls. What made you go this route? Well, it was really about extending the frontiers of freedom for girls. And when Richard approached me, um, the Mbumba Foundation's uh, idea of raising the dignity of the girl child and De developing the leadership of a girl child made sense to me because mm -hmm. I am where I am because I stand on shoulders of giants but also people extended the ladder of success to me. It's our turn now with Jerry and all of these other fantastic women to expand the frontiers of freedom for the girl child. We might be looking at it as uh, an activity to help uh, raise funds mm -hmm. but you, you're saying that it goes beyond that Absolutely. Well, what's, what's the bigger bigger significance for you well it's all about a democracy that works for all it's all about leaving no one behind and in Boomba their name suggests getting together to help those among us who need help it, 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 it's part of Ubuntu in Boomba and to me, it had a lot of appeal because 25 years into democracy, we're not all there. You know, they say as Pelelanga, as Pelelanga in terms of enjoying the fruits of democracy. And he's giving us an opportunity, all of us very busy women who can't organize these things on our own. And Mbumba is organizing it with the Mandela Foundation so that we can step in. So for me, there was a connect between what I'm doing at Stellenbosch University as a chair of social justice, which is about a, a Marshall Plan or a Musa Plan to advance 
um, social justice, in other words, to end poverty and reduce structural inequality by 2030. It's also about what the Tuma Foundation calls a democracy that works for all. And therefore, I really thank the Mbumba Foundation for bringing all of us like-minded people into this port of Mbumba to connect our hands mm -hmm. so that we can lift the girl child. But in the process, we're lifting the boy child as well because mm -hmm. a lot of it is about dignity. They've moved from sanitary pads. What Richard hasn't told you is that, yes, it's about sanitary pads, but it's also about educating the girl child about their dignity beyond just menstrual hygiene. Your dignity so that these young girls don't trade their dignity for temporary gains, like being involved with sugar daddies or blessers, or just doing anything that alleviates poverty for now, but plunges them into perpetual poverty and sickness for the future. That's so profound there, what you just said, mm -hmm. that they don't <coughs> trade their dignity mm -hmm. for short-term gains. Uh, term Marie, gain. let's bring you into the conversation as well. Happy <laughs> Women's Month to you. Uh, LexisNexis SA, um, what inspired you to participate in this uh, activation? Well, LexisNexis, uh, as a company globally, the one thing that combines and uh, solidify us as a group is to uphold the rule of law. Professor Tuli Maroncela is a rule of law champion in her own right, and therefore we thought it makes absolutely perfect sense for us to align ourselves with her and to partner with her to support this worthy cause. But also with Richard Mabasu, who is doing absolutely groundbreaking work for the girls in this country, we like in the way in which he approached the, the challenges that these young ladies are facing, and we decided to support him. But we also are committed to make a difference in communities and in our corporate uh, citizen initiatives uh, to commit our time as well as our resources to make the lives of our girls a little bit easier in this country. Richard, talk to us about this extended objective uh, of yours and the kind of support you're, you're receiving, how you feel about that. So the extension, um, we introduced the concept last year whereby we said it's not enough to just do the education and uh, hand out the pads, but it's also going deeper and looking at the the, the well-being of a girl and the boy child. So we introduced the concept of... Uh, menstrual hygiene dialogues. Okay. So last year it was the first of its kind and then this year we've already hosted three dialogues, one in the Eastern Cape and one in Kaiserin and one in Joburg. And uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, when we come back the Tambo Foundation has jumped in and said we want to also host uh, three of those in the Eastern Cape in the village of um, the Stalwart or Artambo. Mm -hmm. So we go there and we sit down and have a discussion and ultimately we want everyone to understand that menstrual hygiene is not something that affects women it's a societal problem and we need young boys to start understanding what is it that they can do to support their fellow sisters uh, as, as prof mentioned earlier that they don't then get themselves into into uh, uh, poverty because they were trying to find short-term solutions. So in terms of the support, I mean, we, <clears throat> we've been receiving a lot of corporate partnerships like uh, they've already, you've already in, uh, introduced Mari. We also, I mean, on Sunday when we leave, uh, a company engine is coming through to say we will come and host the send-off. Uh, welcome back, there's a company dot Africa. They say we want to welcome you back. And they not only just coming in to say it's a welcome and a send off, they also help us with the amplifying of the message to say that it is the time now that we need to all stand together and make sure that young girls are protected. Mm -hmm. And I think finally for me is that uh, we, we even got uh, the technology companies, Huawei, they, they donated handsets, uh, their cell phones to say we want to make sure that as you walk you every step, touch. Yes, mm. as, as you walk each step, at the end of the day, you need to have documented a beautiful journey that you can come and share with everyone and inspire the world. So I think in terms of the partnerships that we continue to build, 
And I mean, I don't even have to, to mention the Tuma Foundation because I think um, Tuma Foundation, in their work, what they do, it, 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 it sort of uh, uh, fits in perfectly with our objective to say, once we get these girls together, we do the menstrual hygiene talks, we want to make sure that there's a leadership element so that at the end of the day, we have a girl child who is um, developed uh, holistically. And I think the other thing is that uh, talking to Prof uh, last year, she kept saying to me, yeah, but Richard, I want more. What, what is it that you yeah. can do? I want yeah. more than this. So I said, mm. no, Prof, you would be pleased to know that um, beyond just climbing Kilimanjaro, we now... Uh, on a mission to take 100 girls through an initiative called Trek 100 to go to the seven continents and experience some of the world's wonders. Last wow. year we took the first group to Morocco and yeah. they went to the Sahara Desert mm -hmm. and then this year we're going uh, to take, last year we took eight because it was an introduction. This year we're taking 24 wow. boys and girls to China and they go so you to kept experience. sufficiently busy mm -hmm. yes 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 so i think for me it's just like uh, prof was saying earlier it's about getting together and say what is it that we can do as a nation of south africa that was once blessed to have the leader like uh, madiba hence mm -hmm. the program is all umbrellaed under track for mandela prof this massive support that imbomba is getting <laughs> is it a reflection of the need for these important, these important conversations, but also just looking at the work of Tuma, uh, uh, the Tuma Foundation, the importance of civil society in taking forward important conversations, such as the figures that came out uh, this week that uh, a big portion of the of the population is unemployed. Absolutely. Well, uh, uh, you are right, Desiree. Uh, the first reason people are supporting this is because they realize that there is a need for these conversations. It's really conversations about rites of passage, about girls, what it is to be a girl, menstrual hygiene, but just generally the place of a girl in society. And I'm happy that Richard has also brought in the, the boy child, because if you're talking about rural South Africa, I was once confronted with people who are saying, you're saying take a girl child to work. It works in countries where boys have been advantaged, but in our country we it's not necessarily boys the case. have also been disadvantaged, especially in townships and rural areas, we need programs for boys as well. Then you, you prevent the backlash. You spoke about violence against women when we started. Part of that gender violence is a backlash, where you, you all poor, 29% unemployment, that's the official figures, 55% poverty across groups, but 64.2% poverty among Africans, people who are classified by law as black Africans. Uh, so everyone is desperate to move somewhere. However, what this support also reflects is that people are hungry to do good. Oh, yeah. They're looking for vehicles because not all of us can start a social enterprise. And Richard's thing and teaming it with, with the Mandela Foundation has made it easy for people to key into it because uh, Nelson Mandela was the epitome of doing good just because it's a good thing to do, not because it's your job to do it. But because it's a good thing to, to do, which is the essence of Ubuntu. The Tuma Foundation loves this partnership with Imbomba, partnership with organizations such as LexisNexis, um, Anglo Ashanti, because it's really about joining our lights so that nobody falls through the cracks. The way at the moment CSI operates, it's often little dots here and there. And the UN says leave no one behind, but we're leaving millions of people behind. So the idea is to connect our lights so that we truly leave no one behind. And we owe that if we want peace, mm -hmm. because as long as there's injustice somewhere, there can't be sustainable peace anywhere. Marie, you're not only supporting this initiative, but you're also taking part in the climb. What are your reasons? Well, obviously the course is uh, greater than the trepidation um, and 
Um, I think it's also about breaking the taboos around menstruation and menstrual hygiene. The girls have many, many challenges that they need to face. And if we can climb one more mountain for them and give them an equal opportunity like what boys have to complete their education, that's one of the main reasons uh, we can, or a, a, a very good reason for us to uplift our nation if we want to build a strong nation, is to give the girls the proper opportunity to finish their school education. So uh, in terms of uh, people watching now, wondering how they can support uh, this whole initiative, what kind of support systems have you got in place? We have the SMS line um, that they can uh, uh, make pledges to or can make donations to. They can SMS my name, M-O-R-I Marie, to 42513. There's also the uh, Give and Gain link. If you go on to giveandgain.com, they will find Mbumba Foundation Caring for Girls there. And they can also make donations directly to the Mbumba Foundation on the Give and Gain platform. Stunning, Richard. Let's just talk about the exciting bits. Okay. One of some of our colleagues here at the SABC are taking place. I know a colleague of ours in the newsroom, Dundu, is taking place. Yes. You have Mroza. Yes. Uh, who, who else? Who else is taking part on this particular yeah, okay. one? So yeah, from um, Rosa from Mukozi, we have um, captains of industries, CEOs, uh, team from Seriti. I know there's a team from Absol. So there's a lot of people, and I think for me, those people uh, indicate the, you know, the need for people to get together to do good. And I always say to people, uh, many years ago when I was still younger, <laughs> I, uh, I had an opportunity to visit uh, France, and then I went to learn about this one particular little uh, town where they were making champagne. and. And this it's changed city, the world perspective. <laughs> yeah, so this city had only this champagne. They just grew grapes and made champagne, and then now it became one of the best champagnes in the world. So when I came back, I started looking at the world differently and say, if as a country we are presented with so many resources, um, what is it that is making it so difficult for us to improve our lives, to use the same resources that we have to to whether it's to change our situation. So Kilimanjaro was one of those where I say, people travel from all over the world yeah. to come and climb for various causes globally. Yet we as South Africans are not really doing it. So when I started, I said, let us explore this. And then Kilimanjaro, it's in the African continent. So we need to exploit it as one of uh, the natural resources that God gave us. But also there's a lot more beyond that. So I think for me, it is exciting to be an African, but we need to have a, a, a mindset that is not of um, a, a handout, but it needs to be a hand up mindset mm -hmm. where yeah. someone needs to come to give you a hand up rather than a handout. But also, Prof, beyond the causes, <coughs> at a personal level, uh, one wants to feel that they can conquer, isn't it? Yes. Uh, absolutely. It's, 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 it's um, uh, actually here it is pleasure with a purpose. That's what I found with the climbing. Is it's really given me a hobby, and I, I tried golf. It didn't work for me. Yeah. And 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 this has given me a hobby. But it's also helped me to become part of a a, a, a tribe, because we do our work in, uh, in like I'm at a university. We do our work as tumor, but a lot of it is we meet and we go. We don't really. Uh, enjoy things together like just be girls yep. uh, grown up boys girls and uh, although we're climbing with people mostly my kind of career stage not not the same age in terms of ages some are very young but, accomplished some quite old, but it's it, it, it's that kind of accomplished people although it is like that we also when we do the trainings though we meet people from all groups and I have found that I'm now a member of a tribe, which is the kind of South Africa I want to be part of, a non-racial South Africa. Members of this tribe are white, black, Indian, mm. colored, Chinese, foreign, or foreign origin South African. And the only thing that brings us together is joy, the joy of giving. And it's, it's said actually giving money makes people feel happy giving away money makes people happy but it doesn't make you as happy as 
actually participating mm. in the process itself, physically being part of it. So what is that like for you to be able to support but also be fully part of the process? I, I, I must say that the experience has been amazing because I've grown spiritually. I have grown through, in terms of my uh, my perspective on leadership, I mean, just to tell you one small thing is, uh, 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 Mamela is one of these uh, young ladies that we, uh, we, we, we've been climbing with. And as she said, one of the things that we can do now is find a way of helping the private sector and the public sector work together on leadership. Mm. And she was saying that we always think that the, the public sector is a lost cause yeah. and the private sector is where things are. She has found that government has soul. Even if people drop the ball in terms of maladministration, but most people in government are doing this mm. because of the joy of giving, the joy of saving. Whereas in industry, people, it's about profits. What happens when the profits are not there? And, and uh, we discussed this and said, you know, we could do something here. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you find space to discuss conversations about where else can we make a difference. Um, with my colleague, for example, who, she is one of the people who recruited me to Stellenbosch, but we never have a cup of tea together. This has and allowed suddenly us. Suddenly you had the opportunity. So, so, suddenly it's like yeah. people in Gulf, we talk. And we started talking about fees must fall. And saying, instead of always worrying about money at the beginning of the year, when people are excluded from registration because of historical debt, why not use the Simbumba platform? After Kilimanjaro, we come back and we do a national local walk where we go to oh, raise wow. money. Yeah. So there's so many conversations that come up. For me, I just like the vibe in the tribe. You know? So, Richard, the aim is to arrive there on Women's Day. Why is that? Uh, uh, is this tied to Women's Day? So we, uh, maybe to go back a bit, what uh, Prof didn't tell you is that she really gave I imagine there is a lot to young tell. young ones a <laughs> hard time. <laughs> she went 26 kilometers on Drakensberg and she was with the first group. So well oh, done. Wow. And, uh, uh -huh. So I think for, for us, the, 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 the biggest thing is that um, we, 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 we thought if we were to do something else, one, it has to be in line with our um, public holidays because we need to build a significance around those holidays. Mm. Because some people, it's just a holiday, then more especially when I was still at school, you, you didn't go to school and then you don't care about anything. So now we said we wanted to have a significance and then Women's Day uh, was one of the two actually mm. because yeah. initially we we're going to do it on Human Rights Day on the mm. 21st of March and then uh, when we looked at the um, the interest because now more and more people became interested but then the preparation time they require at least three to four months of training so we felt that we can extend it and we couldn't do youth day because it was um, uh, close to to the 18th which is mm. our our, 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 our original expedition. So Women's Day for us became a no-brainer. And also because, you know, teaming up with people like Mari, like um, Prof, and all other women that we are learning from in, in this expedition when we do our training, you realize that there is a lot that we as young, uh, genera younger generation, and most particularly young girls can learn through these platforms that now uh, Prof is talking about to say, what can we do now to create a, a bigger platform for our, the intergenerational um, uh, a process of mm. passing on the button to say, Prof, in order for you to get here, how was it like? And I'm sure that times were tougher then than they are now in yeah. terms of the opportunities. But those conversations for us, we, we feel that can be communicated better if we use such days as Women's Day to say, uh, let us go and take this long walk, Madiba's long walk to freedom, and then let us stand on the highest point of, uh, of Africa, of Africa. To, yeah. to, to amplify our message, to say um, the, 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 the dignity and the social justice of young girls should definitely be among the top priorities of the government's agenda. Well, I suppose uh, with that, it's thanks to all of you. Uh, but Prof, in one of your answers, you said something like, uh, 
pleasure for purpose. Mm. And the first thing mm. that came to my mind was PP. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, we can mm. never let up the opportunity. You know, we, we're talking about climbing a mountain now. And uh, you, you, um, the person who came into office after you seems to be climbing a mountain of her own in terms of uh, her decisions being reversed left, right and centre and you're constantly being brought into these conversations yourself. What are your thoughts about developments in that space? Well, for me, I, I wish my old office the best possible present and future. I wish my success are well. I wish the government of South Africa well and the people of South Africa well. It is said that there are these skirmishes and hopefully they'll be resolved in a manner that ensures that the integrity and dignity of the office is not just preserved but of it, is, it is improved, yes. Well, they, my, my old office, mm -hmm. but it also hopefully will be reserved in such a way that the state of South Africa is also given an opportunity to tackle the challenges of today. 29% unemployment, 55.5% poverty. We need to find a way to say which are the things we're going to give priority whilst making sure that there is good governance, mm -hmm. whilst making sure that we end corruption and also making sure that um, we don't have a state whose pockets are captured. It's brought on a lot of anxiety for citizens. Mm. Just in, as a leader in society, as a, as a, as a way of assurance, uh, does this, um, should we be worried? No, we shouldn't. Uh, growth comes with pain. I see what's happening in my old office and what's happening in the state of South Africa in our society as growing pains. But what it says to the rest of society is, let's all look back at the constitution about the democracy we want. The one thing that I definitely disagree with is when people attack decisions at the office to go personal, to insult. Uh, the other thing that I disagree with is the approach in our society that says, people who are good only do good, People who are bad do only bad. Because then we lose the opportunity to criticize some people, but also we lose the opportunity to learn from some people. So let's make sure that whenever we see wrong, we condemn it. But when we see good, let's all move forward with that. So it's not about the person? It shouldn't be about the person. It should be the way we deal with her should be the way we deal with anybody, including the way we deal with the judiciary. But also the way people are dealing with the judiciary now, when the judiciary makes decisions that people don't like, you know, it's now become just a common thing, oh, you are agents of white monopoly capital. And also being donor funded is being made a swear word. This is awful. You know, our democracy um, came through an Mbumba process. There was the armed struggle, there was the UDF, there was the anti-apartheid movement within white South Africa, there was the anti-apartheid movement globally. There was donor funding. Since President Nelson Mandela's government in 1994, we've gotten donor funding. This whole thing when you criticize people, you say they donor funded, that's a silencing of people's voices. Um, my appeal in the way we handle this thing is let's handle it with dignity. Our constitution lays the foundation of a new society and one of the foundational values is human dignity. And that's where we're going to end it because we don't want to hijack the Trek for Mandela interview yes. for other issues, but we hope you can commit to come through and visit us sometime during Women's Month so that we have a further conversation. Thank you so much, Professor Tulin Matanzala. Richard Mabas from Mbomba, thank you so much for your time. And Marie, uh, talking to us from Cape Town.